So there are three elements in here, uh, three, three things we need to calculate. One is the area of each triangle. And what is the gradient of each of these basis functions uh, on the triangle? OK, so let's figure out how to calculate the area first. So to make it easier, let's uh, make a script. Got a script. Uh, find an element 2D. OK. I'm going to, so I'm going to assume I already have the uh, P, T, and I, B uh, calculated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first try to calculate the area. Area is going to be a zeros, uh, the number of elements. So let me first say, okay, so number of elements is equal to the length of the triangles. So it's triangles, uh, the second dimension. So any is the number of triangles. So a, uh, let me let me reserve the big A for the matrix. So let me call it small a to be the area. So let me see. So this is the area, small a. Okay. Uh, so small a is equal to any at one, and uh, I'm going to go over all the triangles. Okay, the area is going to be equal to, it's really, uh, so I need, to, I need to figure out two of the edges and do a cross product between the two edges. That divided by two is going to be the area, right? So, so let me first uh, compute the vertices. So V1, okay, so let me say V is equal to zeros. Uh, two, three. So, so I have a, I have a vertex array. Uh, the first dimension is x and y. The second dimension is the three, is the three uh, vertices of the triangle. So v one is equal to my p of column and uh, my t of one and i. Right. So this is the the location of the first vertex. So my second vertex, uh, to make it a little bit clear, let's, let me just call it V1. Let me just call it V2. Let me just call it V3. So two and three. All right. So these are the three vertices. Each one is uh, uh, just two numbers, X and Y. So AI is the cross product which is really the dot product of v1 minus v2 and uh, basically the, the the rotated vector of v1 minus v3 right so let me here i'm just going to make it a matrix times uh, the rotated vector is 0 1 minus 1 0 right so it's it's this, uh, you basically take one of the edges, you rotate it by 90 degrees, and you dot product with the other edge. That's the cross product. All right, so that divided by two is gonna be the area. Oh yes, one of them should be three, thank you. So let's run it to see what I get. I get an A that is equal to a bunch of things, and uh, the magnitude seems to match uh, the the size of the areas. All right. Okay. Any questions on this? Nope. Okay. So next we have the area. Next is to compute the gradients of the basis functions. Okay. In order to compute the gradient, let's use the fact that if I have the gradient of phi i, the gradient of phi i dot with any vector, let's say the vector of v, uh, the location of the vertex i minus the location of the vertex j, for example. This should be equal to what? The gradient of that particular basis function that is equal to 1 at vi and 0 at vj. 
What should it be? The gradient of a linear function dot with a vector should be what? This should be the value of that phi i at v i minus the value. Let me let me say it's x i and x j. Sorry. So x is the location of these uh, of the vertices, right? So so if I if I have a gradient of phi i dot with the difference between the two locations. This should be phi i at x i minus phi i at x j, right? This should be what? Should be one, right? Because uh, unless unless i is equal to j. So so for any x j that is in the triangle, but different from i. The grading dot this should be equal to one. Okay, so so let me. Uh, so now we have the three axes in the triangle. There are two independent j's I can use. So that allows me to form two linear equations whose right hand side are just one and one. The left hand side is the left hand side is uh, a matrix that is formed by. Uh, let me see. So x x one minus x two. So let's call it y one minus y two, x one minus x three, y one minus y three. So these are x and y coordinates. Dot with the x directional gradient of the first basis and y gradient of the first basis. That should be equal to one and one. Right. So this gives us linear equation to solve for the gradient as a vector. So let's form the matrix and uh, compute it. So to form the matrix, we just need a v1 minus v2. So that is our first row. So we need to we need to transpose it to get the get a row vector. And uh, v1 minus v3 transpose to get a uh, row vector. So this uh, inverse times the right hand side, 1, 1. This is going to be the gradient of the first basis, right? And I can do these three times to get the gradients of the three basis functions associated with that triangle. So g2 should be 2. Oops. <coughs> Three. This should be three one. This should be two three. This should be one and two. So each of the matrix is formed by the difference between one vector and the the other two vectors on the triangle. Okay. So now we get the three gradients. So now we have all the formula we need uh, to compute the value of the matrix, right? But the matrix is a summation over all the elements. Now instead of going through all the pairs of i and j and figure out uh, all the elements that are shared by the basis function i and basis function j, we loop over the elements and accumulate these values of a and j. So we loop over all the k's and look for whichever i pairs of i and j this k contributes to. We just add it on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vector, uh, make a matrix A is equal to zeros. What's the size of this matrix? Should be the number of points, right? So let's let's also make it m p is equal to size of P and two, so that's the size of the the matrix M P by M P. So these elements has three basis functions that it can contribute to. So what I have to have is uh, uh, let me call it I one T I uh, call it I one I two and I three. And these are just the i1, 
let's simplify it i2 and i3 right so so these are computing the three vertex points and the same indices is going to we're going to compute the contribution to so i1 and i1 is going to be is going to be accumulated by something right so and we also have basically we have nine values that we'll contribute to so we have i2 i2 we have i3 i3 uh, we also have the cross terms for example i1 i3 i2 i uh, i1 so let's let's start uh rigorously so i1 i2 i1 i3 i2 i3 and uh, uh let's do this now and uh, when we the the other the other side should be exactly the same because the the matrix is symmetric right so so let's let's only construct one part of it for now so the formula according to the formula this is uh, summed by a of i the area times the gradient of phi i times gradient of phi j so dot of g1 and g1 right uh, this is dot of g1 uh, g2 and g1 uh, g2 and g2 sorry so this is uh, 2 and 2 this is 3 and 3 3 and 3 and uh, this is 1 and 2 this is 1 and 3 2 and 3 so here should be dot of g1 g2 here should be dot of g1 and g3 here should be dot of g2 and g3 and uh, let's I mean if we care about computational efficiency you won't do this but let's do this just uh, for the sake of uh, uh, clarity so I'm also going to be making uh, the transpose of the transpose part of the matrix to be adding up on the same value Okay uh, Any anything any bug in this you can spot one two one two one three two three two one okay Looks good to me All right seems we have constructed the matrix so let's run it. Okay, looks like it ran, and uh, we have a matrix A. So spy A should be something like that. Uh, most of the A is empty, which means it's zero. And uh, so for what we see as blue dots, these are the locations on the matrix that are non-zero. These are the coupling terms. These these are the neighbors of uh, basis functions.